you. Hello, everybody. My name's Roy. I'm an MK Ultra survivor, uh, also known as a targeted individual. And today I've got a friend of ours from California. His name's Lorenzo. And um, Lorenzo's homeless. So if anybody can help Lorenzo uh, in the California uh, area, that would be great. Thanks for joining us, Lorenzo. Nice to see you, brother. Hey, nice to see you, Roy. Thank you for this, and I'm glad we got to meet up, man. <laughs> Likewise. Over to you, mate. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, I'm really not good at these things, but uh, I guess I'll go for it. Uh, um, and look, I, I'm here at the college, and look, they're starting to flood in here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go ahead and get going. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, hello, you guys. Uh, my name is Lorenzo. Um, I'm a targeted individual. Um, I've been one, I'd say, heavily since 2015. Um, I'm also a, a sexual assault survivor, LSD survivor. Um, yeah, um, my targeting uh, really uh, began heavy in, uh, I want to say, 2015 when I was going to school uh, in Texas. Um, I believe that some of it is behind, uh, I believe some of it is behind, uh, to cover up the sexual assault that happened to me. Um, when I was, um, ah, uh, all right, let me slow down. Uh, I kind of got notes here too, Roy. I'm sorry about that. No, nothing to be sorry for. Take your time, Lorenzo. For sure. And I want to um, say as well, while Lorenzo was doing that, Lorenzo has been deliberately put on the streets. And made homeless. So sorry about that, Lorenzo. I wanted the audience to know that, brother. No, no, thank you. I I can use it too, Roy. If you if you need it, if you need to get in, please, please feel more than okay. welcome to. Thank you. Yes, sir. Over to you, mate. For sure. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Um uh, okay, yeah. Two thousand uh around two thousand sixteen, uh two thousand fifteen, um, uh, I was uh, going to school. Uh this is when I was in Texas. Uh it started heavily. Um, not it wasn't too heavy. Uh, yeah, I got into methamphetamine, which I, I hate saying that, but I want to be completely honest with everybody because um, I want to throw this out there. Like the state of Oregon, like they had legalized a lot, a lot of the drugs. Uh, like with with me with the methamphetamine, which which I quit. You know, I, I know it's not a good thing, but really the worst thing I would do on that is look at is is look at you know stuff you know and that would be it you know i wouldn't be out there in the streets and whatnot so you know this was their chance to, to to use that against me but for the most part you know i was going to work and whatnot and um i made my way back to california in 2016 under the impression that uh that i was going to get arrested in texas and i, I wasn't it was just it was the program you know it was yeah hey people are watching me so i went back came back here to california to uh to be closer to my family uh, got stuck here in uh I got stuck here in um Orange County um because uh when the cops when I, as soon as I got off the plane I'm a little bit I'm not all in my mind but I'm assuming that the cops are going to kidnap me because of this person whose father is an ex-cop sexually assaulted me in 2011 so I'm putting that together like okay they have to get rid of me because hey his son did something so he's having his dad hey son i'll clean it up for you like it, it kind of sounds like a movie but it's it, it's nuts like i can actually back this stuff up but um yeah 2016 to the through 2016 through, the, to, through 2016 2019 i'm working um you know uh i'm working uh and i finally uh one a family member of mine tells me uh you need to go see a doctor so conveniently i'm hearing voices hey i gotta go see a doctor the whole three years, my case manager, my doctor was sitting there having me on these pills. And um, <laughs> I'm getting brain scans and they're coming back negative. And that's when I'm like, something is not right. 2019, I get off probation. Uh, Track probation with flying colors didn't get in, didn't get in trouble because I'm living in a sober living home now. Because in California, it's more expensive than Texas. In Texas, I was able to survive. Here I'm really not, but now, now I'm definitely not. But uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, 2000, yeah, 2019, I get out of probation. I, I pass it with flying colors. Uh, my PO was very cool dude, man. Uh, but I knew he knew something. A lot of the officers knew knew, knew things. So, and I find out that 
on this camera right here. Oh, so they've been watching me the whole time. So I've been covering that up. But I mean, of course, the sober living homes that I was in, you know, there's there's uh, there's maybe four men to a room. So any one of these people could be could be shills. And now, you know, the more that I knew about the program, the more I, I the more I found out about the program, the more I knew that I really can trust people. So, um, um, yeah, uh, the sober living homes, uh, you know, there was uh they were they would bring around intimidating people, you know, and um, they brought around an intimidating individual where I'm like, OK, so uh, I guess this guy, he's probably a hired guy for for this cop son or or something, you know, or part of this cult or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? They're, they cut off my work after I got off probation. They cut off my work because normally like I'm from California. But um, I don't like to live in California since it's so expensive. Like, there's other places that you can survive in here, you know. But like I said, what brought me back here was, you know, mainly family and me originally being from here. I got family. I, like, I went to school. I went to school in Texas. Like, I, I kind of like to say I'm from California and Texas because that's where both of my families are from. On my mother's side, they're from Texas. On my on my on my on my dad's side, they're from here. Oh, I'm sorry. On my dad's side, they're from Texas. On my mother's side, they're from here. So, um, yeah, but anyway, moving on, uh, in 2019, yeah, I had an EEG done because I was having this abnormal walk. Like it, it came down to the point to where, to where like these old, uh, I call them associates cause they're not friends, uh, or even some family members, uh, uh, they, it came down to where they even hated my walk. So like, I would have this, like this abnormal walking and I would always hate it. Like what's, what's going on with me? They did the EEG on me in 2019. Um, and it came back and this is keep in mind this is when i was when i was finally starting having trouble find work and i've never had trouble finding work i'm good at all areas in warehousing that's like the work that i do that's the work that i started at when i was in texas and um yeah they uh they cut off work and after the eeg came back negative the second eeg came back negative now keep in mind every time i would have a they had they put a box on me it was on my hip Every time I would walk abnormal, I would look at the time on the box. I would highlight it. Hey, this is the time. This is was the, this was the area where uh, 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 this was the area of the of of the abnormal walking. It was I marked it like critical, and they, it came back like no ne negative. You're perfectly fine. I'm like okay, no, I'm not. So I was like okay, since I have a record now. I was going to go to Utah, lay low for a little bit, since there's not that many people there. I had old friends that grew up in Utah, too. Very beautiful place, a lot of good people there. I'm going to go to Utah, lay low for a little bit to get my rights back. Then I'm going to go back to Texas because I'm in Texas. You know, if you want to protect yourself, you know, you can have almost anything you want. Like, Texas is a really good place. Like, like I'm not into violence, but I'm into protecting myself. If I, Like, I don't want to give your viewers that, you know, that uh, kind of impression of me, like Texas, like their gun laws are free. So you can protect yourself, you can protect your family without, you know, having to worry, oh, we're gonna limit your, we're gonna limit your ammo and stuff like they do here in California. That That's all I'm trying to make with that. Like their gun laws are more open, I should say, like that to protect yourself. And it's just, and it's just stand your ground state here in California. And that's another thing for Utah. You just to stand your ground state, Texas is just stand your ground state. California, no, like they really like shackle you down here. Um, but yeah, um, I go to, I go to Utah, um, and the first, oh. hey, Kelly. the first, job, the, the first job on that, man, you know, I, I was thinking like, man, this is where, this is where the Lord sent me, man. I, I, I met someone out there that, you know, that I felt like, Hey, this is, this is where I'm, I'm supposed to be in. No, nope. like Chandler just threw all that, threw all that to, to SH, you know, had this person thinking things that I'm, that I'm not saying, that I'm not thinking. Um, everyone at the job is just like, and this is within a week that I'm here in, in Utah. I was able to, I was able to, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Me, like this, this, this made me, right when I went to Utah, I did relapse, like Roy, it was to the point where, oh man, I got to start over, okay. I, I I hate saying this, but I want to be as honest with the viewers as possible, right. Roy. You know, um, I, I left state, uh, 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 relapsed, relapsed a, a, a day. When I got to the, I'm sorry, when I got to the bus station, I relapsed because there was a gentleman that sat there and met me like, hey, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from California, man. I'm like, hey, I got to start this over. We get high and then that's it. The next day, Roy, I go look for work. I find work. <laughs> 
And yeah, I'm I'm in this place. I meet this person, and then all these other people are just like counting me on the job. I'm like, what's going on? You know, and keep and keep in keep in mind, it only took me a month a month to uh to find a place out there. I found a room out there, a cheap room right there in 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 a in out Sandy, Utah. Man, beautiful, like right where the ski resorts are at. Man, it was. It was nice, but um, yeah, you know, I, I get down to Utah, I relapse, uh, get a job, and I'm still working. I'm still working. I get fired from this place because, like, I, like uh, on top of this, uh, I think this bombshell that they brought in. Like, I'm not uh, like I'm usually good with uh, with order pulling. I've been doing order pulling for like over ten years, and like I don't know if their system was confusing, but sometimes like my brain would get scrambled, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I'm thinking like. This girl is so beautiful. She's making me like, <laughs> she's making me lose it. But no, it's 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 the stuff that was put in me and in, in you know back in the day, and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, they like they let me go of that job. They let me go from that job. I find another job in like just the fact of um, of me like like this woman this this girl this woman she mentioned something to me like to where I'm like okay you know something about me that I do that I don't know. So, and that kind of brought me down because, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to make, I wanted to, for her to kind of like be a companion of mine and whatnot. So that brought me down even lower. So, um, yeah, uh, now this is around like August, 2019. Uh, I'm still in, I'm still in the room, renting the room in, uh, in Sandy. Uh, I'm working. And then, you know, I just like the depression starts hitting in a little bit more. And now come to find out about it, you know, even now my landlord's acting funny. So I'm like, okay, you know, what did I do? You know, like, like, well, why are you treating me like this? Like, this landlord has even made fun, made fun of, uh, made fun of a death of a family member who I believe that is involved in it. That, that I believe that was a victim of this, and um, he tells me, uh, like, I'm having trouble paying rent because, uh, you know, like, now every job that I'm going to, like, I'm still finding work for you, but every job I'm going to, like, I'm getting hounded. I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't right. What is going on? And, um, uh, yeah, my landlord, I tell him that, you know, I'm $50 short on rent. He says, you know, it's okay. I'll pay you a hundred dollars to leave. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Something's not right here. Um, so I, he pays me to leave. Uh, I'm sleeping out of a storage. I'm still in Utah. I'm, I'm sleeping out of a storage February, uh, no, January, 2020, uh, right before COVID hit, I'm like, I'm going now. I'm now Sandy's next to Draper in Utah. I'm riding. I'm catching the bus waking about four o'clock in the morning. I got a painter's apprentice job. And now I'm going to work every day. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get back in a place. I don't want to be out there in the cold. And um, March 16 comes. And that's the date that, you know, the world turned because that's when they shut everything down. So I'm like, OK. Um, I have money. Uh, I'm still homeless. No one's letting us work. I get high again, Roy. And it's it's off and on. It's not a constant yeah. thing. Like one thing that that, that my that, that my uh and my dad can can verify this, but he, he you know, I believe he's he's uh he knows part of this. Um I can just drop let things go, Roy. Like I'm not like an addict addict. You know, I'm I'm like a a a a a, a person who every 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 so often I would say you know and and like yeah. I say I'm saying this just to be completely honest with your viewers occasional I, rather than habitual. Yes, sir. Y yes, sir. And, and the thing is, I'm always paying attention to my environment. And you know, um, after that happens, uh, okay, March 2020. Uh, okay, I'm in a shelter, and they're bringing in people to harass me and whatnot. And finally, uh, I'm and finally, uh, I get work. I'm working on and off. Um, it came to the point where I didn't even want to go to the shelter. I'm sleeping outside and people are still harassing me at work. Um, and then that's when the gang members come to work and start harassing me. So I'm like, you know, what? forget this. I'm leaving. You know, I get an email to go to Oregon, Portland, Oregon, because they're saying we got to talk to the individual program. We got to talk. Cool, man. Forget this. I got to find out what's going on. I want to protect me. I want to protect my family. Get me off this whatever sick list this is. So sure enough, man, I go to Oregon and um, I'm supposedly uh, being put on a list. I've been put on the list for something there. And I go back to Utah and, you know, it just goes all to shit from there. Um, I am uh, I'm 
fighting uh when i'm in the in the shelter i i get i get two of my teeth knocked out <laughs> yeah. i get two of my yeah an individual uh that, that i believe this part is cold i get two of my teeth knocked out um i have uh i get um uh, attacked with knives for defending myself when the individual brought a knife to me because i confronted the gentleman who did this and another gentleman who came with a knife who came to me with a knife i took it from him and he ended up getting cut because i wanted to defend myself cool. but after he got cut there was a whole bunch of dudes that surrounded me and they came at me and they cut me a whole bunch of places they i don't know if your viewers can see this they cut me in my hand they kind of kind of oh, yeah. see it. bloody hell yeah, my hand was my hand was mutilated and my back was, and I went to jail for these two incidents. Guess what? One of the judges that wasn't with it, he dismissed the case because they had a video of the individual who did this to me. That because I confronted them, I guess get this, Roy. I'm getting ready to go to work, Roy. Minding my own business. This individual is conveniently there at six o'clock in the morning on the rail, walking towards me. So I'm not gonna lie, Roy. I, I aggressed him. I'm like, hey man, this is look what you did to me. <laughs> Look what you did to me, man. So, but it worked. It worked in my benefit. It worked in my benefit, Roy, because I wanted to you like I wanted to use the art of war tactic. I wasn't gonna hit him. I wanted him to bring out his aggressiveness. I saw the animal that came out in him. So when he rushed me, that's what saved me in that court date, Roy, because the prosecutors, me being a target individual, they wanted to bring it in here. Hey, hey, this guy. Because I, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. After this happened, Roy. I've had to carry two knives with me just for my protection, just for my protection, because this this was scary. Like even even uh, uh, scarred me up here too, split me open right here. And it was for my protection. Oh, and, and the night that they cut me with the knives, I got hit with some more brass knuckles right here. <laughs> like this whole face was swollen. It's it's in my jail picture too. Uh, I, I I I have it somewhere. I don't want to dig, dig deep into it, but yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose track. Uh, oh, it's so. Yeah, uh, I'm in jail. Um, I be the first case. The judge dismissed. Like he t he tells he tells the um, he tells the prosecutor like like your victim looks like the aggressor. Like why did you guys charge? No, we're not doing this to this young man. Get it out of my courtroom. Like he <laughs> he wasn't with it, Roy. He wasn't having it, man. He knew something fishy was going on. So that right. case got the that that case got dismissed um, with prejudice. So they can still bring it back. But this guy has a worse record than me. <laughs> He assaults police officers. So yeah, big guy, big guy. Um, the other case when I was the other case for me getting mutilated, uh, for me taking the knife from the individual, uh, took it to court with my lawyer. I beat that, and after that, they knew that hey, he's not going to stay here in in Utah anymore because look, he knows what we're doing. He's catching on. So um, I'll leave my mask off because it's like getting getting wet. Um, yeah, I, I uh, after yeah after before my before I beat that case, uh, I was uh I, I I was I was drinking I was drinking for the most part uh, uh the drug use is still going on and off but I'm still going to work I'm still handling my business and um I I used to have dreadlocks I used to have dreadlocks and and when I'm sleeping in I, I go to another shelter and uh when I'm actually you know I I didn't tell you about uh. Well, let me back up the summer of 2000, uh, the, su the same summer this was going on when I was going to beat this second case. The first case is already dismissed. The first case is already dismissed. Uh, I'm in jail for the second case. I get out on bail because there's there. They had a bail fund out there. Right. Like, actually, they would bail you out. You know, my bail was twenty five thousand. Uh, the, the, those people at the uh, bail fund, very nice people, man. You know, they, they help out people that, uh, you know, they. Before they start out, they're like, look, we don't judge, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we want to help. And, you know, they helped me. You know, I'm grateful for those people. Uh, but they get me out of jail. I don't go no, I don't no longer go to those shelters, Roy. I go out to a shelter in Ogden, Utah. And, uh, you know, there was a, there's a, um, what's out there? I can't even, think. it's a, it's one of my favorite colleges, uh, Weber State. I go to Weber State College to study. You know, is that that's the thing I do. I, I I mainly go to colleges, study, try to try to stay away from these stalkers as much as possible, even though they're up there too. But the shelter I was going to out there, it accepted kids there, Roy. And yeah, I, you could probably kind to sense where this is going. They would bring out like these girls that would be like all like dressed up like a like a John Benet Ramsey. I'm like, why are these kids in here dressed like that? 
there was an older individual, older gentleman, Roy, maybe about your age, Roy, they would take a little Asian girl into a room. And I'm sitting here looking and I'm like, nobody's noticing this. I speak up about it. You know what they tell me? Hey, you mind your own business. Now, keep in mind, I grew up with a pedophile, my stepfather, who was doing who statutory raping my sister, you know, and, and that's, that's what made me think that that's probably that's probably who has a hand in this, too. This man is so ashamed that he has to do this to me. But I can't, I can't throw that out there. But that that's you know, this is what adds to this is what adds to my puzzle, you know. But, um, yeah, this guy's taking this little girl in there and I'm like. What is this man? What is we're gonna be? Look at this. What is this man taking this girl in? That's not it. Obviously, it's not his daughter. Like, like, what is what is this guy taking this girl in there? Hey, you be quiet, mind your own business. I had to let it go, Roy. I was like, okay, that's fine. Every morning, I would get up when I go to look for work or go to the college. He would be walking with this girl, and I'm like, you know, all right, I guess, you know. But there's uh, there was another little, little girl in there that they would have her say just these, these things that I don't I don't even want to get into. But yeah, there was another girl there too. Um, I called the I called the editor out there. An editor, there's an editor out there. He really looks out for the people, man, for the homeless people, because like they're doing a whole bunch of shady stuff with the, with the shelters and whatnot, not giving people proper housing. And the thing that made me, uh, that made me, and the, the thing that made me realize is the reason why they're doing why they're doing this. When I was at the other shelter where I got attacked, there would be the same people there for one or two years, one or two years, Roy. Like you guys aren't getting up and living for a job. Like they're literally housing you guys, and that's what I'm thinking. Okay, you guys are the you guys are the stalkers. They're giving you, hey, you got a bed for free. Uh, 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 antagonize this guy. He's a bad guy. Antagonize him. And, and you know when I come back and like think about it, it's like <laughs> it's, this all adds up so much, man. But yeah, uh, I beat the case I, before I go on trial. Um, somebody in the shelter they put another LSD or whatever in my. I barely even had half a pint, Roy. There was lights put in my hair. I'm at work scratching. This girl's looking at me like, what the, what's going on with it? Well, it did. Uh, I'm scratching my hair and like there's an egg that falls out. I'm like, no way. No freaking way, man. Uh, somebody had to put lights in my hair, man. I I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt because when I was when I was doing the drugs, keep in mind, I was out on the streets, you know, and, and the lights could have gotten in my hair, but. I, I, I've been doing it on and off for two and three years. Roy, I never even caught COVID. I was picking up cigarettes off the street smoking. I never even got COVID, man. <laughs> so what, what is, I, I'm really like, I, like, I really like to, to put myself out there and get dirty so I, I'll, I, so I could fight the immuneness. But I haven't been sick like that, Roy. Not to brag or anything, but yeah, th that whole COVID strike, I, I, I never got sick once. And I was, I was literally living out, living out on the streets off and on. But yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, uh, they drug me. Uh, I go after. I, this is after I get off work, Roy. I gotta have a pint to drink. It, it's been sitting in my bag for a while. So somebody either at the job put it in there or at the shelter. That that, that drink was sitting there for probably maybe about maybe four days. After I get off work, I'm like, heck no, I'm not gonna see the people. I'm not gonna let the people at the job see me like with my hair like this. I go buy some ammonia, go buy some vinegar, whatever can get the lice out of my hair. I watched it a couple times, man. I went to the Flying J. And um, yeah, man, I uh, I'm in there. I have my drink. Uh, I'm sh cleaning up, showering. Uh, uh, actually, first I'm washing my hair, and then I'm showering. And you know, you get like two hours or whatnot. And you know, normally I I would be at the Flying J a lot of times when I won't want to go back to the shelters and deal with the stalkers. Um, I uh, I hear a knock at the door, and I pick up my phone, Roy, and it's like ten. I knew it was the police. I, it's like ten minutes. Like right, ten minutes, like ten seconds, and then the, it just blacks out from there, man. I wake up at the jail, and I know I'm like I start banging on the door, Roy. Like I hate you, MFs. I hate you. I hate you. I knew something happened, Roy. Yeah. I knew it. I was like, Bam. MF. They got me again, Roy. They got me again. Yeah. So now I got something else inside me, or you know the LSD programming, and. I <laughs> Every time I think about the mature candidate, I'm like, this isn't true. This isn't true. Reading Mind Wars, it is true. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I beat the case and um, they arrest me again for the last time. You know, they try to throw another assault on me. Uh, one of the judges, Marlene, one of my uh, misdemeanor uh, lawyer that I'm assigned to, and one of the judges leaning up, he tells, hey, Mr. Bennett's trying to get my life, getting, trying to get his life together. 
and they knew I was leaving. I was like, I'm not going anywhere else. I went to Oregon and this got put on me or whatever got put on me, whatever scenario. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about the police that were doing things. Um, yeah, in mid 2000, in January 2002, uh, there was a cop who took my phones. I ran from them because they were shooting this person's voice in my head. I ran from them. They took two phones of mine with no warrant or anything. I still have yet to find out what happened with these phones. I've told my lawyer about this too. Uh, there was another time where uh, where I was in a, a hotel room. I, I was doing drugs. I called the police because I felt like this person was like in there, was in there to take me, like posing as an officer. Um, right when uh, I called the police, uh, this op I, the officer, I tell him, uh, hey, this person followed me. And they were like, well, Mr. Ben, if you don't get into these cuffs, there are 50 fellow agents here headed here right now. I'm like, 50? I start crying, Roy. I start, I'm like, okay, they're getting ready to kidnap me and like do their sick cult stuff, I should say. I don't like mentioning that stuff, but they're gonna do their sick cult stuff on me, you know? And, you know, sure enough, they, I'm screaming in the back seat and no, they take me to the hospital, just lock me down. I'm like, okay, so that kind of had a PTSD effect on me. Uh, and then, and uh, another incident, and this is the last incident, uh, this, this is the mid incident. The first one was when they threw me in the car and that was January, that was December, 2020, January, 2021 is, uh, when they, um, is when the officers had, cause I was trying to call for a lawyer for, cause that's when I came back to Utah from Oregon. I was trying to call a lawyer like, Hey, you know, what's this going on with me? Hey, I, I think something has been pinned on me. Uh, these two officers uh, grab me. They take me to a Walmart. They, I'm, I'm in the Walmart. They tell me to leave. I'm like, hey, I don't have any reception. I can't get any reception. I don't know my number. I'm trying to get a hold of a lawyer. The officer looks at the other officer. Here are these cameras on. They grab me, throw me in cuffs, and they sit me down in the back. And I want to. I've been wanting to see Walmart behind this because I have a lawsuit with this. They take my picture, Roy. They were like, here, smile. But I put my head down. I'm like, it looked like a kidnapping, like crazy, right? If you look at my picture, like you got this kid with his hands behind his back and cuffs, it looks like you're getting ready to kidnap this kid. Like now that I look back at it, man, it's it's kind of funny and it's kind of scary at the same time, man. And and yeah, uh, go fast forward to a year, uh, a year later. Uh, I'm sorry, my story is all over the place. <laughs> oh, so you're very articulate, and it's good, Lorenzo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Your times and dates and everything, everything is articulate. Yeah, I, 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 those are some days that I can't forget, Roy, because those were days like, hey, am I going to lose my life today? Yeah. Like, what's going to happen? Am I ever going to see this? These people that I care for? Am I ever going to see? see am I going to see justice for yeah. everybody that this is happening to? Yeah. Um, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, uh, July two thousand twenty-two. Uh, after I leave this place, which I told you earlier, which I. I, after I get out of jail to fight the second case, uh, I, I, the voices are hitting me. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm quit. I'm, I'm quit. I'm quitting the dope. I, keep in mind, I, 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 I do the dope. Then okay, I'm time to look for work. You know, I swore. I'm back at it. But finally, I'm like, no, you know, I'm gonna go into this house. I'm gonna go into this, to this, to this. Uh, I'm gonna go into this program. I'm gonna get right. They place me with this individual that I believe holds a badge. That, you know, he got me to react. And I didn't even, the funny thing, the, the crazy thing is, Roy, I didn't even react towards them. I went out to the other room and I blew steam because I'm like, okay, in this house, these are probably the people that are covering up for this for this individual's son. This is probably people that are, so I'm like, you guys don't know what I could do. Oh, well, look, he's acting out. Let's put him deeper on the list. I'm like, you know what, Roy? I, I, I left that house. I'm like, no, this is just a sham. I'm getting out of here. You guys don't care about my mental health. And, and that's another thing that really brings me back here. Because now, I, mean, I haven't even bothered they came to see my to go see my old doctors back here, Roy. Because they, they, I think that's why they have to do what they have to do. Because they know I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill them. You guys were lying to me the whole time. Yeah. You, you guys were BSing me the whole time. So they, they. So the, the Utah was the time to engage. That was the perfect timing. And like that, that COVID was, was, uh, I hated that, that epidemic, man. That really, that really brought me down. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, 2000, yeah, 2022, uh, yeah, after I leave that house, uh, I still, the six months that I'm incarcerated, um, they, uh, my check was, uh, my check was waiting at, at, at the staffing agency. I go get my check, which is a very healthy check. 
um, I, uh, I get high with that. Not all of it. I get high with that, go back to work. And then I go out to that shelter back out in Ogden. And then they have this guy drilling me with voices. And I'm telling them like, Hey, don't, don't kidnap me. Just, I'm telling them right now, just shoot me in the head, man. Can you guys just shoot? I'm literally telling them out loud in front of you, just kill me. Just shoot me in the head. That's, that's how low it got me. That one of the security guys that comes from, and I still have one of his cards too, because I want to report, I want to report this guy because he was allowing this guy to take this little girl into that, into that room to, to, to sleep over. Yeah. To sleep overnight, man. You know? Um, um, but yeah. Uh, to J- uh, July, 2022, it was July 17th or 18th. Um, I, he comes out, Hey, Lawrence, are you okay? Do you need an ambulance? I'm like, yeah, but don't have the police, you know? Sure enough, ambulance comes with the police. I'm like, you know, no, I'll wait. like when the police are like, no, I'm fine. And they're, you know, sure enough. Oh, well, he said that you wanted to, you wanted someone to kill, to, to, you wanted to commit suicide. So you have to come with us. So I'm like, man, forget it, man. So I'm, um, I get in, I get in the, in the, in the, uh, the ambulance with them and keep in mind, they have the same people that I saw last time. Like they have the same people. That's another thing that I noticed. Like they'll have the same nurses and whatnot. Like, wait a minute, this isn't right. Like when I got mutilated, like they have the same doctor the same doctor in there. I'm like, no, get away from me. You're trying to poison me. Like, that's how bad I was reacting. Like, I don't trust you guys. I'm sorry. I don't. But they take me to the hospital. Uh, and he was like, one of the officers, I, I would just say he starts with the G. He says, thank you for coming, Lawrence. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. And I start booking it, Roy. I start running like towards the hills. Now, Cedar, now, uh, Weber State, it's kind of like on a hill in Ogden. It's like the whole college, beautiful view. It's like right there on the hill. I, and there, it's like slopes down as you get towards the city. Like the hospital is like right in front of in front of it, like across the street, at the athletic hospital and the whole hospital in general. I start running towards the neighborhood, and I'm screaming, "Help! They're trying to kidnap me! Help!" Now, keep in mind, yeah, this is this is this is some of the, the drugs, but at the same time, it's not because I'm seeing these same people. <laughs> So I'm running down towards the neighborhood. Help me, help me. These guys are trying to kidnap me. I'm surprised the cop didn't tase me. I'm surprised he didn't shoot me. Now, keep in mind, this is a guy who admitted that, yeah, hey, I'm coming down on methamphetamine, but you're not bothering to tase me or nothing. You don't know if I could be a danger or not. So what makes me think, hey, is this guy really a cop or is he just somebody in a suit? So while I'm running, I leave my bags there. I have my two phone, two phones with me, Roy. That's the only way I could communicate. Forget my, I had a, I, oh no, I had my money with me too. I had my money, I had my phones. I'll leave my backpacks behind. You guys have those. I'm running. I run down the hill screaming, help, help. I'm jumping fences, whatnot, cutting through houses. They're rolling through this whole neighborhood. It was probably maybe, I would say, maybe four blocks worth of, worth of neighborhood or area, massive neighborhood where I was at, where I was just cutting through, trying to get through. Uh, trying to get through. Hopefully they leave or spend the night somewhere. Um, I lose my wallet with my money in it after my, cause I had at least $700. I lose my wallet. I'll forget it. I'll find another job, whatever. I have my phone still. I'm able to get on a roof and wait right there. And like, there's, I, I, there wasn't a helicopter yet. Uh, all there's at least six patrol cars. So I'm waiting there on the roof. And then I'm finally like, you know, they, they don't know where I'm at. I'm still, I'm, I'm sitting here on the rooftop looking at them. And I'm like, man, forget it, man. I'm just going to give up before it gets worse. And then I'm like, okay, hey, I'm right here. And then, you know, they're all, hey, get down. And they, you know, I haven't done it. Oh, no, no. I give my speech. I tell them about, I, that's, that's what I wanted everyone to know. I give a speech about my handler. I am on a target individual list. I have not murdered anybody. Now somebody's trying to cover up. And they, like, they heard, get this kid off the roof. Hurry up. Like, they bring the ladder up there. I wanted the neighborhood to hear, hey, I'm not running from anything. I'm a targeted individual. They're ta- the, when I look up, they're talking to this person in the corner who comes out the house. I'll never for I like I can I remember all this. Yeah. So much for somebody being a method. <laughs> I remember I remember all this, Roy. Uh, they're yeah. sitting here talking to this talking to this guy in his son across the street. I'm screaming, please, you guys don't kidnap me. Keep in mind, I'm saying that because of my previous incidents with the cops did. Yeah. emasculated me don't kidnap me i haven't done anything sure enough they take me to the hospital they're like no we try to do it Are we we try to do it the calm way now we got to do it our way they throw me in cuffs throw me in the back of the car i'm like please don't 
Keep in mind, when they take me to the hospital, there's a gentleman sitting there. There's a helicopter there. Uh, the, 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 there's a helicopter for the hospital there. There's a gentleman in an army suit sitting in the next, in the next room. So I'm like, okay, like, I'm still like scared. Like, what, what is this? What is this? And then the officer, he finally says, we need to see his phones. Takes my phones, Roy. I think they, they, I think they assume that I'm because I'm high that I'm not going to remember these things. I saw it with my own two eyes. Sure enough, my phones are missing. It get this after they released me the next day. I probably wait like two or three days after all that scaring did that I did to that neighborhood, Roy. You know, I was able to still find my wallet. Wow, good for you. I, I went back and found my wallet, Roy. So I'm like, okay, I'm not losing it. You know, this officer, wh why did he take my, I go to the police station. Why did he take my phones? Oh, well, your phones are missing. No, they're not. I heard him. I saw him take my phones. He didn't have a warrant. I told my lawyer about it. Cause keep in mind, this is July, 2022 to 2022. My case was in my case. My last case that I had to beat was uh, 2000 uh, was November, 2022. They drugged me October 6, 2022. October 6, 2022. And I, yeah, no, okay, no. Yeah, they drugged me then. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he takes my phones and yeah, I roll in October hits. That's when they drug me and then I beat my case. And yeah, those are the incidents that I had with the officers. Um, and yeah, uh, July, December, um, I'm, I fall asleep once in the library. Um, there's a lady that comes over and tells me, hey, you can't fall asleep. We were trying to wake you up. And then I ask, I'm like, hey, you know where you at, guys? It was the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. And, yeah, she gets these two guys to, like, rough me up. I'm the one who gets charged with the last assault. I'm like, forget this. I'm going back to the last place where I had my PO. Because when I was out there, I called my PO. Like, look, something's going on. He never reached me back. I was a little bit belligerent, too. So I could understand if he was like, look, this kid doesn't sound like he's all there. I mean, after all the stuff I went through, Roy, <laughs> I who I'm could not, be I'm there. laughing with you, Lorenzo. I'm yeah, laughing for sure. With you. <laughs> for sure, we, we we have to have that kind of sense of humor, man. Like yeah. even 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 when they have me on the buses, man, I have to make a joke about myself. I have to, you know, I have to keep the smiles going. I'm grateful yeah. that we're still. I'm grateful we're all still here, man. And yeah. and yeah, I I came back and yeah, that's from then on. This is I've been getting hounded. Um, they gave me one job, one old job here, um, which I believe was with the old coworker that I used to have. I believe that uh, she probably has a, another person. She has a person who's also in, in enforcement that uh, does not want me to work. But they gave me one job to where uh, I was working. Like I was only getting one day off uh, every 13 days. And the first 13 days uh, I was able to do it. Um, after that, they were like, OK, now we got to you got to call in. So I'm trying to call my supervisor, call my supervisor. She's not answering. Uh, I go to the, I go to the job again, to uh, the job down here in, in back. This is when I came out to California. I go back to the job. They don't want to give me one job since I've been down here. Um, I go to the job and she's not, she's not picking up her phone. Finally, I just walk in. She has her two sons there. Now keep in mind, I'm still carrying two knives with me. Uh, ever since I left to Utah, I've been carrying two knives with me. Um, she, uh, she gets her, her sons get out the car. These are minors. And, you know, I get arrested. You know, they say I pulled out a knife on them, which I didn't. And that's a case that I'm trying to uh, revoke now because they take away my gun rights for another 10 years here, which I don't, I don't care about the gun rights here in, in California because they're, they're SH, they're crap. Um, yeah. And this is just to, so I won't defend myself or won't, you know, commit suicide if this person comes, get, comes and gets me. And yeah, uh, from then on, man, um, Every job I've went into, uh, no, we don't have any work available. Um, there's another, there's even uh, another lady who printed out uh, one of the locations, the staffing location, that printed out a, a resume. Here's your work, work history. This is the resume I gave you, ma'am. No, it's not. <laughs> I know this, this is something you just typed up on office. So you guys listening, keep in mind, if they tell you they don't have any work, these people, they, they'll they hire people on the job to put cameras in the bathroom. They'll hire people as a fake receptionist to say, hey, yeah, we're going to send you at this job. But really, these people are like inside, like I would say, like agents, inside agents. So when, hey, this guy's a targeted individual, this guy or this woman is a targeted individual. Um, hey, send them to this job, but make sure that the shows that you send in there, 
make sure that you know they put the cameras in the bathroom and keep in mind they have to keep they have to take the cameras out of the bathroom when other individuals go in there who aren't on the list so it's it's who has time for this stuff yeah it's 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 nuts man but yeah and here i am man um you know right here at the college man just trying to study uh you know survive hopefully what i want to do i don't want to live any place anymore i want to buy a van roy and live out of it that's what i've came to now like mm-hmm. I, i've been reading a lot of the chorus sites like well there's a one targeted individual in there and some of them could be shields too but yeah <laughs> oh there's a lot of shields in there even there is. though i've helped so many of them a lot of them attack me as well the amount of horrible messages that I got, but I'm going to do a program or a quick video on all of them that have done it to me. So I'll show who's real and who's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and the ones that come up, say I'm, I'm targeted. You come to find out that they can look up and they give that wink to the next person. Like, okay, no, I have to get away from you. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nuts, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what it all adds up to, man. It was a little bit choppy, but yeah, man. Um, like the how they were able to get me, uh, uh, is through somebody with a badge, <laughs> and yeah, you know, I mean, I'm thankful that they haven't, you know, kidnapped me. Um, uh, but I don't want this. I don't want this supposed, you know, because them taking my phones and whatnot. I don't know what they're putting on there, Roy. Like after yeah, I got out exactly. of the jail, after I got out of the jail, like the laptops that I had, I would give them away. Like, no, you guys are gonna. Oh, Mister Brandon, you have this on your. No, yeah. no. It, it, it's some of it's some of the old my old associates that are doing this to me. They, they like they knew about my addictions, so it's like <laughs> it's like come on, you guys have to come up with something better, man. But it's still it's still like the subject of it irks me, Roy. It's like. Uh, no, and and yeah. the the, the, mess, the messed up part about it is this editor. He hasn't hit me back. Um, I told him about it last year, and I I totally negated my situation. I was like, no, I was worried about what was going on at that shelter, and you know, I, I um, I I tried to get in touch with him again next week. He hasn't contacted me back, but you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna explain my story to him, and you know, tell him what this list is, and you know, if he wants to help me, he he can. But you know, I seriously. Like, it seems to the point to where, like, this uh, cult, like, I guess they could get off with, like, hey, you know, you do this, you know, either we'll do something to you or you'll be put on this list, which, you know, I can understand why, you know, some some family members and and friends and a lot of people like, hey, you know, you're just going crazy here. Sit down, take these yeah. pills and we'll, you'll be all right. So not anymore. I want to get an EMP to, to knock this out, but I don't know if the EMP is going to stop my heart or stop anything, you know, <laughs> it's, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, so uh, at the moment, what's the next step, Lorenzo, you're doing a course at, uni, at, the, at the college. No, no, I, I'm not. I, I haven't really had any money to, uh, they're not letting me work. So I'm just getting a general delivery, uh, general, general, general relief right now. Uh, it's like a uh, yeah. They're get, I'm getting that right now. Um, I want to, but I, I don't want to be here in this county anymore because, like, I don't know. Like, like on top of this BS case they threw on me, like, I don't know. I could fall asleep and they could, you know, do that yeah. all hypnotic thing again, Roy. It's like, I and I, I'm scared to leave the state too because it's like, like my I have yeah. two options. It's, it's either California or Utah because, like, they, both my hand. This is where they were able to complete this mission. Like, let's see if I go somewhere else, you know, because I, I like to be on the low. Well, let's see if I go somewhere else. And, hey, well, now here's the operator with like, our two hammers. We can go there and we could throw something else on them. So now I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible, man. You know, and, and I, I take 100% blame for, for the use, for the drug use. I was broken and I take 100% for I take 100% blame for letting these people, for giving them the power to do this to me. Yeah. You know, so what I'm trying to do is... um. Uh, I may leave just the county, may leave another county. I don't want to be up north with my family because I feel like they, they are a part of this. So, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah. it's 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 nuts, man. Um, yeah. Uh, well, for now, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, try to, I just say try to invest, try to go get a GoFundMe, you know, so I can get my license back, get a van and, you know, like just live out of a van, man. I hate getting on these buses and they're packed. 
like yeah. people saying, oh, you're dead already, you're et cetera, et cetera. Do you, do you, do you follow, uh, I'm sorry, I had a question for you. Do you follow Len Burr? Yeah, I'm very familiar with Len because um, uh -huh. Len came out with Havana syndrome um, uh -huh. so, some years ago when Havana syndrome came out and he became um, a friend of targeted justice. And sadly, we've had a fallout, but it's okay. You know, that's that, that that's how the targeted individuals are, you know, because there's a lot going on within the targeted individuals community as well, you know, because there's a lot of politics and there's money involved as well. And when there's money involved, there's, uh, you know, things can be a little bit messy. Facts. <laughs> mm. Oh. I, I, I want to say this much, Roy. You don't seem like the type of guy that can they can be bought. <laughs> um, fingers crossed. Um, that's why they're okay. trying to get rid of me now, because I can't be. Because that's why I work alone as well, Lorenzo. Because that keeps my full integrity. Because most of them have, um, or a lot of them have turned against me, because I don't like. I don't like the uh, fact that they've all been taking money off of innocent people for many years and nothing's happened. Mm. And um, there's quite a few of them been doing it. And I've been reporting 18 years and I've seen other outfits that have come on the targeted individual scene, taken loads of money and then just gone off with the money. And now, how can you do that to somebody, anybody, let alone somebody who's begging for help and is being tortured and, like myself, mind-raped, you know, how, how can you do that to another person and then just clear off with the money? You know, so that is, you know, that's my stance. And no, they can't buy me because I'll go out when, my, when, when I'm ready to go out, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you, man. Um, oh, I, I didn't... Have you and um I don't know if you want to speak on this uh how about Miss uh, Toledo? Yeah, I've well I've got time for her. I know she's blocked me at the moment, but that's all political as well because um basically the company that Anna's representing, I was a big fan of Anna's and I've done a few interviews with Anna's, but sadly somebody came to me and they've told me that targeted justice have been doing some uh, sort of underhand stuff. And um, I went public about it, so they all blocked me. So that's that, That's the truth behind that. Yeah. I, I look at that website, and it looks, it looks so, like, ninth grade put together, Roy. I, that's just my opinion. It doesn't look like a solid website. Right. Um... Uh, I'm not going to get into that because I've been attacked quite a lot lately because, For sure. because I've been calling people out and they don't like it. So they've been coming at all angles from me. So, you know, I'm only saying Lorenzo that, and that's why I work alone and I can't be bought. For sure. Them, and my words won't be twisted by any of them either. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's for the most part, man. That's that's been, you know, that's been my story, man. Uh, that's pretty much how it all what it all comes down to, man. Uh, people trying to cover up sexual assault and other devious acts, um, yeah. you know, and, you know, trying to get me to see a doctor. But uh, I'm not going to see a doctor. I, 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 you know, I they had their chance to be honest with me. They weren't. They didn't tell me about the first one that was in my ear. They're not telling me about this other thing that's in my that's in me. And I believe this other thing is like to paralyze me, like if I try to fight back. Like as I've been having like this, like kind of like kind of feels like it's like I'm having a stroke, a stroke, Roy. Like it'll like it'll be like a pop like right here, like on a vein or something. And I don't know, it just it's uh I I I, I hate it. I hate it. But well the reason yeah. that my face is so red at the moment is because they've been attacking my chest the last couple of days. Uh, around here, I've got chest pains now, and I've been taking a couple of aspirins the last couple of days, 
um, because I've got a bit of difficulty breathing, but I can't go to a doctor because uh, of, of how, how it all is here as well. You know, I went to the hospital at Christmas last year because I, I fell over and uh, my, my, I've got a broken finger and all they did at hospital is they put some sellotape around it and told me to go home. And now I can't bend the finger any more than that. So, you know, but like you said, they're all in on it. You know, all of the doctors, the psychiatrists, the police, the brotherhoods, the sisterhoods, everywhere I go, everywhere in the neighbourhood, the doors are shut, you know, and uh, they, they, they badmouth you everywhere you go and they talk a load of nonsense, knock into you with the trolleys, bang into you with bags, give you filthy looks and all that nonsense, you know. And what sort of people would do that? I don't get it. Anyway, this is about you, Lawrence. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, we're in the we're in this together, man. Uh, no, anyway. uh, well, all no, I was no. going to say is is uh, I'm uh, I'm very grateful, and it's lovely to have met you, Lorenzo. And I'm so grateful for your honesty. And Likewise. I really mean that because that will that will help a lot of people because people will be in the same boat as you, Lorenzo, and um, they'll be able to relate to your story. And uh, I mean, and if anybody can help Lorenzo, if you'd be kind enough to leave a message in the comments, or or, or uh, Lorenzo, uh, I've got Lorenzo's uh, number, uh, email, and if anybody would be kind enough to help Lorenzo in any way, shape, or form, I'd be really pleased, and uh, it'd be great to help you out, Lorenzo. For. For sure, Roy, you know, I, I can use it, you know, and, and yeah, anybody who uh, anybody has a story similar to mine and, and keep in mind too, like all everybody out there, they're not all with these people, you know, uh, um, that night that that my former supervisor that she brought her sons to the job, they said I pulled out a knife out on her. There was a supervisor there that, you know, he wasn't going to lie for her, you know, so there are some people out there that they're not with it. They're not with it. They, they'll speak out, you know. So I've had a few people who have stuck up for me. So you targeted individuals, you guys uh, just just know that there's very few good ones out there. They know what's going on. They they're not going to side with these people either. So I mean, there's still a little bit there's still a little bit of goodness out there as yeah. as much as you know treason or whatever yes. we're going through. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. To, to, today actually is an important day as well, Lorenzo. Because tonight at eight o'clock in your in your neck of the woods, CBS is doing a program called Target, Targeting America. It's on eight p.m. CBS in the United States tonight. So that's going to be uh, great for the targeted individuals community. Thank the good Lord that the truth is finally coming out. Finally. And now let's, please God, let's get and put a stop to this because they're slowly murdering us. You know, it's a slow, it's a slow kill process. You know, being hit with directed energy weapons day in, day out. Um, the night, the night that they, that happened, uh, October 5th, October 6th, 2022, they also told me they gave me AIDS, HIV. Oh my Lord. Yeah. Are you, you okay? Know. Have you been tested? <laughs> I, I haven't bought, I don't want to get tested in this county. You know, I, I right. like what I, what I want to do is uh, I have a background in a, a, what, what I wanted to do is a, a go to a, a fighting gym and tell them I want to fight. Like if I go, if I just take, if I take on like a, a boxing fight or a jujitsu match or something like they'll have to, they'll have to give me an honest result because I'm in there competing. You see what I'm saying? A doctor could, Oh yeah, you're good. You know, go ahead. Cause I got tested in the jail after that mutilation happened. I got tested in the jail. They could have lied about that. Yeah. What I want to do is like go to a martial arts gym. Like, hey, I want to get a fight, but can you guys test me? You know, hey, you're good to go. Yeah, you can fight. If then I'll know for sure. I don't want to go to a hospital, Roy. I'm it's a nail in the coffin with them. Yeah. Or maybe a little private, maybe a little private clinic. But my best thing was, yeah, I want to go to and also a veterinarian also uh, with the chips. Like, if yeah. if I. If I have like a little bit amount of money, like, hey, can you X-ray me? I know there's something in my head. I know there's something in my body, you know. But 
Yeah, I've been, but I haven't felt like I, I think that's just. I mean, as 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 devious as they are, I mean, that would be pretty disgusting. And even if they did, I'm like, okay, well. Was now it I'm the probably... B2K? Was it the voices that told you you had HIV, or was it somebody else? It was both. <laughs> it's oh, the mob. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh right. <laughs> it's both. So. Oh, right. You know, well, but, I, I mean, I, I know what you're saying about that, uh, Lorenzo. Because last year I had seven pairs of glasses, and the reason I had seven pairs of glasses was the first or second eye test they never picked up, but the third eye test they then decided that I've got macular degeneration in both eyes, cataracts in both eyes, and nerve damage in one eye. And they didn't tell me that till the third eye test. And uh, previous to that, in 2004, when I went to the doctors to ask for a brain scan, um, the brain scan came back as the machine had malfunctioned. And uh, they never offered me another brain scan. Mm. Did, you, did you ask for another brain scan or...? Uh, no, because they'd taken my power of speech away anyway, so I could hardly communicate. Because they took my power of speech away for over two and a half decades. I could only say a few words here and there. I couldn't hold a proper conversation like what you and I are now. Yeah, see, I get like that sometimes. I like, I like I'll stutter, and I would think it's like it's just me. Like, like maybe it's probably because the drug use, but. No, like well, yeah. a lot of us I, they've I, done nerve damage because of the directed energy weapons as well. A lot of us, like for instance, one of my eyes has got nerve damage, but nothing. You know, I've had bladder cancer. I've had two throat operations where lumps just appeared on my throat. I've had a testicle operation where a lump just appeared. I've got broken inner ear bones. I've got advanced sleep apnea. And um, uh, and other ailments as well. Oh, and there's no history of cancer in my family. So it's all down to the uh, directed energy weapons being sent to our bodies. Rory, Rory, why do you trust these people under the knife, man? I don't. But because <laughs> I, because when you're under full MK Ultra and they take my power of speech away, I had no other options. And, you know, and what I've le since learned, that all of our data is being uploaded to the biomedical labs. So yeah. basically, they're, they're, they're seeing with us um, how much my body can take until they kill me or how long uh, until I die. So all of the biometrical data that is being stored and uploaded, you know, they'll know how much a person's body can take until, uh, until they get rid of me. You know, and for, for, for people that are watching this, I'm not trying to put anybody off. This is actual factual. You know, Lawrence, uh, Lorenzo and I aren't talking for the sake of it. You know, this is actual real life. And this could happen to anybody. You know, like I, I've got plenty of friends that are doctors that are actually on the programme, you know, or have been on the programme. So, you know, this, this programme will choose anybody and everybody. Yeah, uh, Robert Duncan, he uh, he said that's the reason why he went on the Concrete Podcast is because even agents, you know, agents were getting hit. So, yeah, yeah it's, you know, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I brought the people in there in the department that, you know, they're doing their own uh, colleagues with it, you know. So, yeah, no, I've, yeah, if if I needed, this is just my opinion, if I needed to, I wouldn't trust these people anywhere near, like, oh, putting me under, oh, under anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I've oh. got I've got a hole in my tooth, and, and I've got a, a gap here where they didn't take the last tooth out, and mm. um, I'm too scared to go to the dentist, the doctors, the hospital, or anywhere now. But some I've got chest pains, and somebody said, "Why don't you go to the hospital?" So I, that was because I put my finger up. That went up. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and uh, somebody said, "Why don't you? I, I I I couldn't go to the hospital with my chest pains." You know, because mm. I'm too scared. You know, because like you said, they're all in on it. 
because everywhere I go, I'm bad mouthed. I don't know what they're saying about me. You know, they hide behind supermarkets and, you know, they pretend not to see you. You know, I've had months of this because they isolated me for 28 years. And it was only last six months ago that I've been start going out to be myself. And uh, that's how they are. Anyway, Lorenzo. It, it sounds it somebody sounds like somebody's doing a big poo somewhere. You're outside the women's toilet. Out here? <laughs> yeah, I can, it sounded you're outside the ladies' toilets. It sounded like somebody was busy in there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. They're locked for now, but I mean, I, I think since I'm on since I'm on this cast with you, I mean, I think they're gonna be flooding in. So, <laughs> or no, it looks like the everyone's like kind of leaving, but oh, good. yeah, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Likewise, and, Roy, and I'm gonna upload this to YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble, and it'll be up within the hour. Thank you, Roy. Absolute much, pleasure. And God bless pleasure. you, Lorenzo. And let's hope we can get you some help, my friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like. All right. Take care and God bless, Lorenzo. Godspeed, Roy. Godspeed, Godspeed. Lorenzo.